Hello folks and welcome back to your next scheduled update on our trusty Range Rover. Now, I know that some of you have been waiting for an update on this, but as you know, I am nothing if not a busy boy. So, let's take a look at what we've got for you on the bench. So on the bench, we've got the usual mess of wiring, and you will see here one of these horrific Nova three-phase induction motors, to which I simply do not uh, seem to be able to rid my, my myself of these things. They simply won't leave me alone. They keep turning up. And our trusty uh, Range Rover, or Rover of Ranges, has two of these friggin' things in it. So, I set about uh, trying to finally figure out how to get one of these things to run. Now, you might quite reasonably say, but Damien, you've had those running before. And yes, that is true, but they've never ran right. And we finally found out the reason for it. See, turns out that our Enova guys, um, how should I put this? Uh, effed up in the back here under this panel we have the encoder and the encoder gives us some important information about the speed and the direction of the rotor and that comes out through this garbage connector here into this equally garbage wiring now see problem was we just couldn't get the encoder signal to stay clean. It was getting noise. It was getting noise from the inverter. And I went round on rings. Hell, I even blew up an inverter in the old drift car trying to get this thing to run. What I didn't realize at the time was that if I had taken the back off that encoder cover, we would have found something interesting. See, our boys here, in their zest to be the most perfect motor manufacturer in the world, decided that they would connect the cable screen from the encoder wire, not just to the motor casing, but to the inside of the motor casing. And what happens when you do that? Well, you capacitively couple all of the inverter PWM frequency straight into your encoder lines they get fed into your johannes brain which then gets confused about the speed and the direction of the motor and fires the phases incorrectly causing mm, problems so now that we have that solved we can now run these frigging anova motors now then i hear you say Wait a minute, if we've got two of them, we're going to need two inverters. And I went round in rings a little bit with this. I was going to use some Prius inverters. I was going to use a Siemens inverter. Uh, I was going to use a whole bunch of things. But as you will see in a few minutes, um, the time frame on the old rangy rover has kind of accelerated slightly. So... I had this baby hanging around. Now this you may have seen before is an inverter converter from a 20, it's either a 20, it's a 2015 uh, Lexus IS300H hybrid. Now this guy has got not one but two three phase inverters in there and it also has a DC to DC converter which can pump out lots of lovely 12 volt amps for, for us and guess what that is designed to run from 288 volts dc guess what our battery voltage in the range rover is yes 280 volts so that gets the dc to dc converter part of the build sorted for us and gives us a twin inverter so i do have this kind of a development board that I had 
uh, made, a, I don't know, six, nine months ago just to test it. So this runs one of the inverters. So we're going to get the vehicle running with just this board here. So we'll be driving the rear uh, motor just to prove that this will work. And I will then um, knock up a uh, another PCB here that will have two inverter brains in there and it'll run both of them. And we can uh, connect into this here through the multi-plug. So I've just got the worst possible setup on the bench here just uh, with the inverter, an over motor, battery, um, <laughs> kind of safety resistor thing, laptop, got myself my trusty E60 Hall Effect pedal. So we can just uh, kick this on, just give it a start pulse. Um, and we should be able to, if I get you guys in here, to just push some throttle. And you'll see the, the motor turning. Now that little kick that you might have seen and heard at the beginning is caused again by my horrific uh, wiring here. So don't worry about that. We were just hoping to make sure uh, that this works on the bench before we go sticking it in the vehicle. And it does. So now that we have got that sorted out, uh, let's go take a look outside the mystery door. Right, I have donned the old head protection dev device because it's quite chilly outside and ta-da, it's here. So, since you last saw this vehicle down at Dave's, um, I have transported it up to HQ and we have gone uh, a little bit animal in here. Uh, over the last couple of days. The horrific battery box and the batteries uh, that you would have seen previously here have been removed. Um, it was a terrible thing that apart from any of the safety concerns just meant that there was no space to fit anything else in here. So, um, first thing that you're gonna no to no notice apart from the missing battery box is that over here we have sorted out our hydraulic connections to the steering box uh, so we will be fitting our um, opal zafira power steering pump which will give us uh, hydraulic pressure to the steering box and um, sort out our power steering because this thing is nearly impossible to turn the wheel when we were towing this it was insane um so we have um connected we have extended the motor phase cables here so these two orange conduits that you'll see uh, this is the rear motor this is the front motor we've brought those up from down the back there well they're kind of in the middle it's kind of a mid motor system this thing um so we've got those up here and i'll be working on getting the uh, encoder cables extended and brought up here next. Um, thrown in a battery here just on some long leads just for powering up the 12 volt systems because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff in this vehicle. I'm not sure of the history of it, but I suspect that even before the conversion was attempted on it it had a myriad of um, electrical gremlins that someone failed to uh, repair so um, let's have a quick look inside obviously we've got the custom dangling mirror here and naturally it's raining again so inside uh, we've cleaned out all the crud and got rid of the fungus and shined up the uh, the dash here so that things are actually a little bit habitable in here now um, and it doesn't smell like crotch so uh, in the center console here we've removed it pulled out the old automatic shifter and uh, we were then able to pull the motor uh, phase cables up through the hole in the floor 
and do the extending on them here. I've also got our trusty um, encoder cables here and I'm going to have to get into the motor encoder plates um, here to cut that ground wire that I was talking about earlier. Now, uh, once we get this done, I'm going to be popping a nice E60 shifter in here. Let me grab that for you and you'll have a look at it. So yeah, I've got a E60 um, automatic shifter here, which will fit pretty well into the space vacated by the old manual shifter. And the beauty of it is this baby is CAN bus. So we'll be able to uh, send all of the shift commands over CAN to our trusty Lexus inverter so um once we get this sorted out um once we once we get the inverter in we'll be able to start getting this baby um sending messages to it so you have all kinds of you know weird functions including burnout mode where we can run the front motor forwards and the rear motor backwards so that should make for interesting viewing and the back there we just got some junk uh, that we've taken out in order to extract the shifter but the car is actually clean uh, we've got the classic uh, sagging headliner there that will need to be dealt with um, good news is that I have noted that not only do we have a cassette deck but we have heated seats so I'm a big fan of heated seats as some of you may know so why am I worried about electrical gremlins? Well, there's a load of little trim pieces removed here, and I'm not sure why they would be. They've been removed over on the driver's side as well. There's loads of things removed, and as well as that, the driver's seat uh, has been removed at some point. And I believe that that box in there is called the body control module on these vehicles. Now. So one of the other problems we've got is that none of the little gubbins in this thing want to work when it doesn't believe that it's got the old v, V8 in there. So, uh, particularly the air sus suspension system doesn't want to work, so we're sitting on the bump stops. So I am going to attempt to um convince the body control module that the v8 is v v v eighting and there is aviating v eighting a a v a is running in there so i think i could be 100 percent wrong but i think that's not going to be so hard now in our engine bay former engine bay a very bmw like connector here um over here this thing kind of these round connectors and allegedly there's a wire in there that sends the um rpm signal from our i guess would have been engine management computer over there which is now gone um to the body control module to tell it to yay start doing land rovery stuff so I will attempt to send a fake RPM signal to it and see if it starts doing land rovery things for us. Okay, folks, that sound you hear is the air suspension compressor compressing. And I think our vehicle is starting to lift for the first time in a long time. That is thanks to our trusty signal generator here feeding a RPM signal on pin 20, that little round connector there. So it now thinks that the old V8 is V8ing. So we'll see if we, uh, see if things start to wake. Oh, there's a light on. How did that happen? Don't know. Anyway, if we go inside, Got loads of nice error messages, but we do have about 2,300 RPM on our rev counter, and um, that's the first time that I've ever heard the air 
suspension compressor coming on so I think we are making progress here so it should be pretty straightforward oh there's other sounds happening now it's all kinds of interesting sounds get that 2300 rpm I'm putting in about 150 Hertz at the minute now it's a 12 volt signal uh, so I think it needs a pull down which would be the very same as the BMW E36 um, there's definitely stuff happening in here well it's been about five minutes and there's no sign of any part of our vehicle moving I think uh, so I'm gonna say there's probably something else we're missing here but anyway at least there's some of the little gobbins starting to wake up in here so yeah I'm gonna call that a win for today at least we know that we've a rev counter signal to put in oh wait a second hmm interesting another sound okay yes as I was saying, I'm going to leave it at that. This air suspension system will obviously need some further suspending. Um, it's this thing. I'm not sure what that's about. It's there. Hmm. Right, so. RPM signal, pin 20, grey wire. Yay. Found something interesting here. Look at this. Um, it be interesting to weigh this thing. Not actually much heavier than the E65, so that's curious. Anyhow, this is also the first uh, body-on-frame vehicle that I've ever worked on. I have to say I quite like it uh, because, I mean, making a battery tray here is just simple. I just got some ba basic steel. I won't bother killing you guys with me doing all the welds on it, but it'll be very straightforward. So... Yeah, I've got to do those encoder cables, uh, fit the power steering pump. Um, we've got to run some cables under the vehicle then to get from the rear battery box up to the front. And we got the rest of the gubbins to do. But it's making our last few days now have made more progress on this thing than in the last year, I think. So I think having it here is going to mean that I should be able to get it done and get it out of here. Um not sure what this thing does i i hope that that's a brake booster some kind of a hydraulic brake booster of some sort uh, i guess we'll find out when we get power to the or we get this rpm signal doing what it's supposed to do anyway enough about that for now so folks i am going to try to look into this camera which keeps moving uh, I'm going to leave you there. Hope you've enjoyed this Ranger Rover O um, update. Uh, we will see you uh, in the next transmission, I hope, unless this thing kills me. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to dislike, uh, don't share, and unsubscribe as quickly as you possibly can. Also, check the links in the description for Patreon and PayPal in case you wish to financially support any of this madness. And I would like to thank the people who do uh, because it's... Um, ooh, moving camera action. It's, uh, it's not cheap uh, keeping me in the lifestyle to which I have became uh, custom. So, also there'll be links in there to the Open Inverter Forum and GitHub and whatever else I can think to put in there. So, do have a look before making comments asking me if my stuff is open source and if it is, where can I get it? It's in the description. It's all free. <laughs> so, <sighs> Until next time then, happy body-on-frame vehicle converting projects. <laughs>